Joining me today from Portland, Oregon, the powerful, sometimes sultry, and always commanding voice behind the songs on the new album, Cut and Run, is musical artist, Sarah Moon. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you for being here. And how are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing excellent. We have a little bit of sun, well, sort of sunshine in Portland today. Usually Some Portland we're sunshine. Fairly rainy. Yeah. What is it usually rainy there? Yeah, very much so. About nine oh. months out of the year, but we're we're trying to have summer right now. I thought it was like Seattle and and Vancouver that got all the rain, it, but it, but it makes its way all the way down. I guess it's that whole coastline then. Yep, definitely cascades. Oh wow, cool. So what do you what do you do when you're not? If if I was in Portland and I wasn't going to every opportunity that I could go see Sarah Moon play, what would I be doing <laughs> in Portland? What's the well, thing there. There is plenty to do in Portland. We're known for a few things. We have the most microbreweries per capita, along with strip clubs. And then we also are known for our coffee. I mean, I think we're always competing for Seattle a little bit with that one. Um, and we're a foodie town. Like, you can get any type of food you want and so many amazing bars. There's so many things to do. And there's music every night of the week. Is there a, is, you just mentioned food, is there like a, a something signature that, that you can't get anywhere else but Portland? Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> I don't know about that. We, uh, I really don't know, actually. Just, <laughs> we have a so lot it's of just... like interesting fusion and we have a lot of like celebrity chefs here. So I'm sure that there is, but I, I don't know exactly what that would be. That's all right. I was just curious because sometimes I talk to people and I'm like, oh, we've got this special sauce or this special food or this. It's like, well, how do I get that? Well, you can't. It's just, you know, local to our area. <laughs> right, right. Like Southern barbecue or something. Like, I don't think, right. I don't know. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. probably get, you know, somebody will slap me on the wrist for that, for missing <laughs> something later, but <laughs> we'll see. Forgiveness, forgiveness. Um, yeah. So look, your music career was already in flight, but you adopted Portland, it seems, as your home. Um, yeah. Is that right? Yes, yeah. I'm originally from uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, so kind of in the middle of the U.S., um, mm -hmm. in a town that's like big enough but small enough and a lot of opportunity for musical growth. So mid, you went Midwest to Portland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blues scene actually drew me out here. So um, um, I was going to say, what's I, the I've always, Yeah, I've always kind of gravitated more towards blues than anything else and you can kind of hear some of that in this album it's kind of that 70s rock blues feel um and there's a really amazing blues scene here and one of the largest um blues festivals so that's that's what was was the catalyst basically more opportunity and did you know people already out there when you had it or was it like hey we're going out i'm this is it or did you already have some linkages to it well, I had a little bit of linkage. So when I was a kid, we toured with a band. My parents owned a, a sound engineering company. And so we would tour up and down the West Coast. So we would go from LA to Portland to Seattle and then Vancouver, BC, and then kind of back and up and, up and down that coastline. Um, and so I did live here for a period of time and I have some family here. So it was kind of an easy move. And I used to visit pretty frequently growing up as well. So it's just kind of my second home. So that's right. So you had some you had some original roots. Now you mentioned uh, mom and 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 you mentioned household where you you know you had some music stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, your parents ran the sound company. Uh, mm -hmm. You were probably around a lot of bands, etc. Was there uh, you know knowing where you are now? Was there an influence uh, on you know getting you into music or or steering you away from music from a parent a parenthood perspective as a result? Yeah. I think that my parents were um, tentative about me delving in because they know, they've seen how hard it is, you know, and, um, uh, but there was no keeping me away from it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to, you know, see a lot of really great acts growing up just because we were there behind the scenes getting them set up. And, and, you know, as a kid, you're just hanging out with these, people that you don't really realize who they are until you're like oh wow they have you know numerous albums and tour the world and so you kind of get this like interesting perspective now sarah you have a child as well i do i have a five-year-old son and and he's growing up around music he is <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> do From you day one. do you see any parallels as you're going through that um 
interesting to see which path he takes. Um, he, you know, of course he has instruments. He has, I mean, there's plenty to choose from here. And uh, he does have his own little guitar and a little drum set. So he's been going through these little phases of what he likes. Um, and up next is the bass, which is cool because, I mean, I always need a good rhythm section. So um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if the bass sticks or not. But So you're supportive. If he, if he, if he says, I'm going the music route, you're a supportive parent on the sure. music route. Sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, it's one of the things I can, I can help him with and teach him, you know, at least instructionally to a certain point. I'm not a bassist, but I can help him with, you know, some of that knowledge and get him started. And if it sticks, then, you know, that's great. Now, you, because you grew up in that music scene and, and you had an inclining, it seems, towards it, did you ever say, I want to do something else, but then music was just always around? Or was it, was the inclining always steady music, music, music? You know, when I was little, little, I wanted to be a ballerina. You know, I think that was kind of my, my little girl dream there. But <clears throat> I grew up playing, I was a violinist. And then um, I played a little bit of piano just to kind of get into music. But for me, once I found singing and once I auditioned for my first choir, I was hooked. I was like, that's, that's why I'm here. That's what I meant to do is to sing. And um, so, you know, since then I've grown in other ways with other instruments, but, but voice is just my main thing. And it's, it, yeah, there's, there's no denying it. Of course I've had day jobs and I, I do other things, but music is what, what really gets me going. What, yeah. Yeah, and you you've got an amazing voice. It's it's so incredibly powerful, and I know I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to talk more about that. Uh, it just blows you blows you away what your you know what your voice is. If uh, folks give it a listen, um, look you you said you were around some bands and and growing up and things like that, and you saw a lot. Um, do you draw on those experiences that you saw with those bands and and you know in your own music journey? Has it influenced you in in any kind of way? And what I mean is watching them go through whatever they went through whether it was the touring the traveling uh whatever you may have witnessed has it influenced or changed anything that you're doing i think that it was just inspiring just to see these people like transform from getting off the bus and like hanging out then all of a sudden they're on stage and it's like oh they own the room right you know it's why everyone's there and um yeah i'd say it was more inspiring than anything else you wanted to you wanted to experience that. Yeah, I just want to do that. Just be on stage and interacting with an audience and interacting with my band. It's it's the best feeling. Do you, how do you interact with the audience? What like are you do you talk to them? Do you look for feedback? Is it uh, a two way thing? You know, I'll be honest. I'm a little shy on stage when it comes to talking, so I don't do a lot of talking. I'd prefer just to sing. Um, you know, I might try to crack a joke here or there, but for the most part, it's, it's more just the, the energetic, um, the, the transfer of energy between everybody who's just there to have a good time and, and enjoy music. And, uh, you know, I know what you mean, like the energy and kind of seeing, get people, you see people get excited or, or dance or, or sing even yeah. some of your lyrics or things like that. Eh? Is that, that's what you mean? Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. Um, You've got three albums and, you know, when I make my way through your catalog, they sound a little bit different than the other. And I say a little bit because yeah. in all of them, there's this, you know, Sarah Moon power vocal, you know, rock melody runs. Um, but they do sound a little bit different. And is there is there an evolution to your sound? Like and I say when I go from, you know, even good girls to the new one, Cut and Run, mm -hmm. it. it it seems to have a more bluesy heavy presence and then you go more to rock with some blues elements in your current in your mm -hmm. current one is that just a natural evolution prescribed deliberate it was natural um you know the first album i have is just self-titled sarah moon uh album and it's it's blues it's all blues and the songwriting partner i was with at the time was a phenomenal pianist and guitarist and so we just kind of I just wanted to do blues that, you know, I moved out here to do that. And so and that's what kicked it off. Right. And then I was really getting into just writing. I've always written on guitar, but I didn't do a lot with it. And so I was inspired and encouraged by some fellow musicians to put out the songs that ended up being on good girl sleep alone. Um, because I wrote, well, I mean, I've, I, I wrote, I've written all the material, but I was really, really hands-on with good girls more so than the first album. 
I did a lot of the lyrics and the vocal melodies on the first album. So it, it's been a natural evolution. Um, and, you know, looking back at it, it's kind of funny how there's like an outlayer on each album. So like on the first album, there's a song called Missoula, which was one that I wrote and recorded. I played all the instruments on. And then wow. that led to Good Girl Sleep Alone, which is all kind of this Americana, you know, roots rock sounding stuff. And then from there, there was a song that my current songwriting partner and I had written. Um, uh, I'm going to forget the title of it all of a sudden. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, be, kind with, be Kind With My Heart. And uh, that one led to the next album. So there's always been like one odd sounding song on there that doesn't quite fit with the rest. And, and it just happenstance to lead you to the next album. Yeah, organic foreshadowing, if we will. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um with the three albums to your to your repertoire to your name, um, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and I I I saw somewhere you were talking about the right opportunity um when it comes to making it in your career and you've got like 22 23 songs to your catalog. Mm -hmm. Is there some sort of benchmark that that you've set for yourself um when you talk about, you know, creating the right opportunity or your right opportunity, what is that? Gosh, for me, I just, I want to do more music. I would love to tour. I would love to just be doing music as more of a full-time gig. Um, and whether it's my own songs or songs that are written that I, you know, by other people that I perform, um, I love all of it. So just, I, I think that's the dream job for me. I mean, a lot of musicians share that dream job, but it just, being able to perform and, and expand my audience and meet new people and travel the world would be amazing. So just making it all completely happen all day, every day, no matter what. Well, I mean, you know, you can't do it all day, every day, because especially as a vocalist, you got to be careful with your pipes so you're not burning yourself out. But, um, you know, like, I don't know how Dave Grohl does it. How does he tour like that and sing like that? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Shots, I think, is how he does it. But, um, yeah, you know, I, Everything in balance, of course, but if I didn't have to have a day-to-day -day job, that would be cool. Tell me about what you mean when you say, as a vocalist, um, what kind of recovery do you need? And and um, duration of recovery or, or things like that? What do you have to do differently? Well, I mean, for me, it's just trying not to get sick, you know, because if you're sick, it's not good to sing when you're sick anyway. It's pretty hard on your on your vocals. But um, that's generally my fear. When I'm touring, I'm like drinking the throat coat tea and all the emergency and like just really trying to get good rest. And it's hard to do that. And you're eating weird food and stuff, you know, like living off of cheese and, <laughs> and a van, <laughs> you know, like not exercising. So if you can balance all that out, I think it's it's totally doable and fun. But um, yeah, just as long as I stay healthy, I, I'm fine to do it. I don't need a lot of recovery vocal wise um, because I am classically trained. I have um, a lot of technique behind what I do. So I don't, I don't push it. It doesn't hurt when I sing. Yeah. You know, you know, your controls and, and your levels that you're dealing with. Um, mm -hmm. Sarah, when I uh, talk to, you know, artists and, and musicians, et cetera, and, and, you know, the whole idea or the notion of their sound comes up and, you know, we get to the, who do you sound like? And and some artists go, uh -huh. don't compare me. Don't compare me to anyone. And then others will be like, it's an honor. Like, if it's an honor if you tell me that I sound like someone who I admire myself and, and, and whatnot. Um, where do you sit on comparisons? Love them or lose them? Are you like... I love them. I think it's cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, nobody's totally reinventing the wheel at this point. Like, we we all are going to sound like other people. And what's been interesting is, you know um over the course of doing like even doing interviews like this people will bring up artists that I never would think to compare myself to so it's fun to hear what people how they interpret my music and how how they hear my sound see I'm gonna ask you about that because I'm gonna tell you who I thought you sounded like and I wasn't going to if you were like no don't compare me to anybody but... <laughs> no go ahead who do you got so I gotta get something out of the way though because I it seems like one of the things is you like heart and, and you're also you you um you play in a heart cover band, right? I play in a heart tribute band. Yeah. Tribute band. Um, <laughs> yeah. There, there is a difference and I'll, I'll be nitpicky on it because the cover no, band okay. to me is like the bar band that learns, you know, 50 yeah. cover tunes and whatever. But a tribute band is somebody who 
really tries to embody the music note for note, um, costuming, kind of everything to put on the most authentic show that you can. And so the band I'm with is called Barracuda and um, I actually play Nancy. So I play guitar in the band and, and wow. of course do some singing, um, which, you know, it's interesting. People often compare me to Hart, but um, I wasn't in the, the Hart tribute band until a while after Cut and Run was already done. So people are like, oh, Hart was an obvious influence. I'm like, well, I mean, sure, maybe I wasn't like consciously. Um, I think it maybe it's just because the strong female vocals that you know, yeah. and the and the guitar playing that really leads people to that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure on some level they were inspiring, but it what like wasn't a conscious thing. <laughs> I do so for me. I do see some pockets of of the Wilson, you know, vocal coming out when you're when you're mm -hmm. uh, singing and stuff. Uh, but I also drew a couple of other comparisons um, when I was listening again across the catalog. Um, I heard a little bit of KT, uh, KT Tunstall. Okay. And, and I heard a little bit of Alana Miles more so on when she did her, like her second album, which was, I think it was titled Alana. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think that's what it was called. It was after the Black Velvet song fame album. Um, but and the reasoning, and it's real. Maybe it's different reasoning. the The reasoning I align that is your your song or your style of singing felt very personal, um, mm -hmm. and I just felt that that's what she, something that she got to. And and I was like, you're there, and 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 there was that sultriness and that that uh, that bluesiness to your voice. Uh, it was deliberate. It was personal. Um, th that's what I was thinking, and and. Uh, you know, I don't know. You, you think I'm crazy or you feel in my vibe there or, or no? <laughs> no, I don't think you're crazy at all. Um, I haven't heard that album, so I'll have to check it out. The Alana oh. album. Um, you know, I always just think about Black Velvet and how like, I hope she gets incredible royalties off that. Because like literally every time you're in a karaoke bar, that's like one of the songs. Somebody's got to sing that song every single time, you know, and <clears throat> that song is still everywhere. It's pretty prevalent. Um I think both comparisons are, they're not, I think, I feel like somebody brought up KT before, but those are new comparisons for me. And so yeah. it's, it's, like I said, it's fun to hear. Well, what's interesting about the Alana and you, you know, you're talking about the Black Velvet song. I remember seeing her um, when I lived in Windsor, which is just across from Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And she was doing a bit of a tour and I went and saw her and, and she said something along the lines of sometimes there's a song that, you wish you'd never wrote because that's all uh -huh. everybody wants to hear. And that it, was really yeah. the transition yeah. to that second album, Alana, which just had these more personal storytelling type of songs. And and that's what when I listen to you, you're a very good storyteller in your songs as well. Thank you. Um, you know, and that's one of the things that, you know, I, I got drawn to is you got all the vocals and you got the sound, but then your storytelling is is just it captures, it captured me anyways. And I think that I'm hoping that as others. Um, you know, I uh, hear that they'll have that same experience. Um, I wanted to ask you a question too about the the number of songs. Uh, your first couple of albums had seven songs, and then yeah. I think Cut and Run has eight. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm a bit of an an analysis geek at times, and I'm going, okay, there's a couple with seven, and then there's one with eight. Is there something to seven, seven, eight? Um, or are, is that just how it evolves? And you're you're really more of a seven or eight kind of song album artist sort of thing is it or is it planned yeah. that way or designed you know am i on to something here or no nothing <laughs> <laughs> no it's just coincidental um but you know i i looked back at one point and i i i needed to check it out again because i think there was something to like the number of years in between each album i'm trying to shrink it down a little bit but i think it was like eight years between the first and second album <laughs> uh hopefully it wasn't that long but it may be uh no i think for me, that's just kind of the sweet spot. Um, I just kind of stockpile and then I'm like, no, I really want to get this album done. You know, I want to like do it. <laughs> so w there was going to be a ninth song on Cut and Run, but we just, just basically on, because of a time constraint at that point, yeah. we had spent so much time on the album already. And I was like, nope, we need to get in the studio. We need to get this done. And um, so we kind of, the the ninth song is is on hold it's in the works but it's well we'll see if it surfaces on the next album that's cool well, there maybe that's your linking song like you said there's always a song that links to the next yeah. album who knows maybe maybe, maybe so. there's something in between um yeah, yeah you never know you kind of never know how that works out eh? 
yeah. you mentioned earlier uh you were in a choir yes like years yes. ago years and years ago i was in a children's just, choir that was how oh. i first started singing so my um i think i was in fourth grade oh wow <laughs> so maybe maybe the end of third grade how did that work um i think it was the end of third grade and we auditioned for the next year so the music teacher that i had in you know grade school had founded the rapid city children's choir <clears throat> and encouraged all of us to audition and showed us like a vhs of what it was and i'm like wait VHS. you get to tour you get to tour yeah. this is awesome right <laughs> so um so I went home and I was like, mom, I want to audition for this choir. And she was like, just assuming that it was like all these kids had private lessons and like, you know, this big deal. So anyway, the teacher actually gave us a uh, private lesson so that we could know how to audition. Because you're a little kid, you know, you don't know how uh -huh. to do it. And, you know, saying like, I think it's America the Beautiful or one of those patriotic songs. Everybody would sing the same song. And so I auditioned and um, was accepted into the choir and then remained in the choir for the full length of time that you could be, which was up until you were uh, like a freshman in, in high school, oh, wow. so about seven, seven years. So I, I toured internationally with them, um, made my way up to Canada. Uh, I think we went to Winnipeg. <laughs> hey, cool. Is Winnipeg right above North Dakota? Is that right? Uh, know? I'm not familiar with where North Dakota is. That's I... too far. Oh Maybe. yeah. It's like in the center. It's like in the center of the, I was going to say, but that, anyway, I'd have, to, I'd have to look up my maps here. Of North oh, okay. Dakota. No worries. I mean, it puts you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's how I got my start. And then from there it was, you know, multiple choirs and, and, um, training in that, in that way. Wow. That's, that's incredible. And, and I guess mm -hmm. that's kind of made its way into your, into your music, um, from an influence perspective, all those years of doing that. Right. Definitely. And just my sound because it's so classically, you know, I'm classically trained, so it comes from yeah. a different place than than your normal rock throat voice. Now, when you write your songs, are you uh, writing the word like lyricist first or music first or both at the same time? Are you do you go a certain way on that or? Yeah, good question. It depends. Um, sometimes I will get like, you know, a chorus stuck in my head and I'm driving around the car and I'll pull over and make a little voice memo. And then I'll go to my songwriting partner, Brandon Cook, and I'll say, Hey, I got this idea. And then we'll write a chord progression around it. Sometimes I'm just free writing and then he's got a, a riff he's working on. And then we just kind of put it together, but we write in all different ways. And, and our, you know, writing style works really well together, especially because we get along so well. And so we just don't shoot each other's ideas down. The whole idea is like, you just say yes, you see if it works. If it does, cool. You keep ironing it out. If it doesn't, then you just speak up and go like, eh, let's change this chord or I want to go here vocally. Um, but yeah, we've had really good success writing together over the years. I, I'm always amazed when when there's co-writers to something because like mm -hmm. the ability to collaborate and and listen to each other and, you know, not get into a, a you know a disagreement if you and maybe maybe yeah something. you gotta check your ego but, at the door right you right know, that's you the know, thing. like like i want this word you know um i don't know uh -huh. uh, <laughs> listen you you also have are doing duets is that is it similar like in terms of working with someone when you're doing duets oh so i'm doing a series called unexpected duets yeah and we just did our first one basically it's just one of those harebrained ideas i i sometimes i'm up late at night and i'm like oh i just have this list of songs that i want to do I'm going to call my buddy Jeff and see if he wants to do this Mayfield 4 song with me. And so Jeff's like, sure. And Jeff has a very, he's in a, a, a pretty heavy band called The Loyal Order. <clears throat> and they, I don't, I don't know if you've interviewed those guys, but. No. <clears throat> excuse me. He's got a very gruff, like screamy voice and, and it's very powerful as well. And I, again, in the car, I'm just always singing along to the Mayfield 4. And I was like, I really want to sing this high harmony and just make the chorus really fat. And so I just did it. I was like, it's just simply for fun. I get to play with a variety of different musicians that aren't, you know, we're not in normal bands together. And it's just kind of, it's fun. It's a super side project, one-off thing. And so I have a list of songs and different artists that I'm working with, um, you know, so oh. anywhere from rock to country to, I mean, we may do some jazz, I don't know, but it's just a little pet project. 
So collaborate, the collaborations are going good on, on the duets. And, and I'm wondering, yeah. Sarah, I'm picturing, you know, you're in the car and you get an idea and you're humming and you're singing along. Anybody yeah. ever look over at you and while you're doing that and see you singing and you look over at them, any of those moments or? Not really. I'm not usually paying attention to anyone else. If I'm, if I'm in songwriting mode, I'm like driving and focused and like, <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's how this album is. Like this album is meant to be listened to on the open road. Like it's, I always call it a driving album. So the goal was to be like, you know, in your sweet ride, whether it's, you know, for me, it would be a muscle car, but some sweet car that you like to drive fast in on the open roads with the wind in your hair and the sun in your face and, you know, just, just road trip music. And so that's kind of how, if you listen to the songs, it kind of progresses that way too. Like just, it almost even sounds like, like the intro to Only You Stay sounds to me like tires on the pavement, just like that driving baseline just you just cruising what uh what muscle car are you driving <laughs> um i don't have one right now but growing up i i actually the family car was a 1967 camaro nice yeah very nice yeah i had, I had a 1984 firebird at one point nice uh, okay it had a 5.0 in it and uh uh-huh if my if my foot just brushed against the gas pedal, I yeah. would blow about a quarter tank of gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're like going. Well, I guess you're not going that fast at that point. But yeah, no, oh. I'm I'm fortunate. I have uh, uh, a few um, friends with some muscle cars, and then also some yeah, right. benefactors when it comes to guitars too. So I, I have some some nice um, hookups. T- toys at your disposal um sorry and i i actually wanted to talk more about the the album and the song but then you said muscle cars and i kind of you know went off went off the road there for a bit um no that's good so the song that that, that you're releasing from the album uh for airplay is also the album title track cut and run yes and yes. and there's this opening primal primal shout that you do that uh-huh. it, just, it, it totally gives me heart vibes in every sense of the word whether i think about heart as a band or just my own heart it's just like wow like it just the 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 it just grabs you um but after that what are the song's roots what's your what's your message here with that song and why are we starting with that one what what's the, what's the why are we picking the title one well i mean we're starting with that one just to kind of hit everybody over the head. Like, here it is. <laughs> this is this is the Sarah Moon sound. Like, this is the screamo voice. Like, let's get it out there. Um, and, and thank you for the compliment. Like, it's it, it means a lot because, you know, I do put my whole heart into making this music. So I am always appreciative when somebody listens and enjoys it. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a journey. It's kind of this, like... Uh, Cut and run is is almost like starting fresh, right? Like sometimes you're in those circumstances where you're like, this isn't working. Let's cut it. Let's go. Or sometimes, you know, you're um, wishing for a different life, whatever. And so, you know, this album is definitely based on some personal experience. It's not as personal as people may think. Um, so, you know, it's it's more drawn from either conversations Brandon and I were having about life in general or other people or some of our own um you know struggles or triumphs um and so it's kind of pulled from a lot of different facets and and i wanted to make it less personal and more universal Hmm. if that makes sense because i wanted it to to just people i wanted people to be able to apply the songs to whatever was going on in their life and the most feedback i get is from the song i don't know like that song really hits people that are going through kind of big things in their life and then also golden silences which is kind of that like you know the the i almost called it fresh 24 because that's kind of the premise of the song it's like this tomorrow's a new day you can always start fresh no matter what's going on no matter how terrible things get today you always have tomorrow you know so just kind of to look forward to that that hopeful message are we gonna do are we gonna see a sort of a slow release to radio or to you know of the songs in any kind of way or or promoting each one uh, in a certain amount of time or are we just gonna yeah let them all run well i kind of let them all run but i am um kind of cut and run is is the first one that's coming out so we're making a video for that it's already been the footage has been shot it's being edited 
edited and um, will be released in probably a, a month or two. Um, but other other songs are being played on the radio, so they they are out there circulating right now. I I'm so I want to see the video and what you do with your opening. <laughs> I know that's. Gonna I had be this exciting. really yeah. elaborate plan. I had such an elaborate plan, and then it was like a year later. I still hadn't done it. I was like, okay, we're gonna get a video done. Um, you know, for me, it was going to involve a muscle car and a show and a this and that. So that may happen on only stay, which is, you know, hopefully that'll be a possibility. But uh, yeah, so we, we did film a video. Um, it's, you know, if I had a better budget and more muscle cars, <laughs> I would have done what I wanted to do. But, you know, you work with what you got. Budgets, budgets. Um, look, at, you mentioned earlier guitar. And so you're not just singing. You also play guitar. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I saw you holding one of my favorite guitars is a Gibson Les Paul. Were you, were, is that, did I see well, that? that's, yeah, that could be, yeah. um, I have a few here. <laughs> so, I see, I was going to say, I see yeah. that you've got quite the we collection. Can, I mean, it depends on which one you saw. Uh, you, uh, you would probably notice if you, if it was this one. So this one is, that's the is, one. Yeah, this is it. So this yeah. is sparkles. Um, sparkles yeah. actually was uh belong to a, a, a friend of mine who is an Everclear. Oh wow. So like Sparkle and Fade. Like this is yeah. a, an Everclear guitar. Yeah. So it's a it's a Les Paul standard. And then I yeah. also have um um well there yeah there's a a deluxe here. This one's name is Iced Tea. T-burst. Yeah, that's a beautiful classic look too, eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is a deluxe, even though it has the, the different binding. Um, yeah. And one of my favorites, my one of my go-tos here is I was gonna, the... I was going to ask, what's your go-to? Which one is your go-to? So generally, oh, yeah. my go-to is this Les Paul body style, but it's an Eastman. Are you familiar oh, wow. with Eastman guitars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So this is, this is generally the one I play, although, you know, I have... I have access to quite a few guitars here, as you can see. So um, I like to bring this one as my main and then another like showy one, you know, depending on what I'm doing. But I have the Gibson Deluxe Ice-T set up right now with nines. I generally play tens, um, but I have that one set up with nines just because I, I do a lot more bending in the heart tribute. And so I've been been playing that one a bit more. But yeah, Does that and then one I got an ST over here. Does that one, the the neck on that, or the frets on that, is that a smaller neck than the other ones? This one? Or is it just, yeah. Um, I don't think so. Oh, same neck? I think neck? it's still, yeah. what, 24? It, yeah. might just be the, it might just be the angle. I was just curious if it if the neck was a bit uh, different different uh, size on that. I don't know. Could be. Nice Could be a little hair. Nice guitars, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. See, I, get, I see the guitar, then I get really excited, eh? Like, I, what can I do? Yeah. So... Yeah, no, I'm um, with you. Like, I mean, even your background, I was like, ooh, <laughs> look at all those. Look at all those LPs. Yeah, I, so most of the guitars I have, I mean, I've got a, a couple of acoustics and I have um, a Fender out in the other room. And there's, I have a Les Paul copy, which is actually not mine. It's my brother's. It's one of the uh, earliest, earliest guitars that he owned when he was about, oh gosh, he was a teenager. Um, uh -huh. And I just, just, I just never got rid of it. It needs a little bit of work uh on the the body the intonation is a bit off um sure. so I've, I've contemplated That's easy enough to fix sort of professionally restored the, the 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 frets are all a little bit off as well so I was yeah like, yeah, yeah. It, it's not like a you know it's a it's a copy type of guitar but it just has some family history and that's why i want to kind of keep it but yeah you got to keep that yeah. yeah this is my main go-to these days uh it's a breed love and they are made in bend oregon oh wow yeah. And this one just fits me a little bit better. I mean, it's still, you know, it's a concert size guitar, but it's just a little bit of a nicer body style for for ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guitars are awesome. And like, they're just such a, it's such a personal extension of, of the, of the player and of, you yeah. know, you, you build a relation. It's, it's really hard for folks. Sometimes I talk, we talk about it and I say, like, I even name my guitars, but you build a relationship yeah. with the guitar um yeah you know 
um, you you depend on each other and you're kind of there for each other in different different times of your life for different reasons. So when you're drawn to certain guitars, right? It's almost yeah. like the resonance or the wood of the guitar. I mean, sometimes it's just the color, but you know, you could play two of the exact same guitar and really like one and not like the other, you know? So it, it there, it's a very personal thing. Like I'm not ever one to buy a guitar online and not test drive it, you know, like it's, uh, like they have to resonate with me. I, you know, I was, I did another show and I was talking about my favorite acoustic guitar is my Norman guitar. And, and I talked about this on the other show, so I don't want to be repetitive for people listening, but it's hard not to with my guitar. But that's what I did is I kind of went into a shop and they allowed me to sort of test drive a bunch of different guitars. And then it was kind of like, you know what? I like this aspect of this one and that aspect. And then I was able to custom make it. So Ooh, uh, yeah, it was, even it was better. A order. Yeah. And they were like, cause at first I was like, well, I wish I had this. And they're looking at me like, okay, rookie, um, you know what, we can, or we can custom order it if you really want. We, and I'm like, really? Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So I was able to get all the different features that, that I kind of was resonating across all these different guitars. So that's uh, great. Yeah. My father builds guitars. Um, and he also does this oh, cool wow. thing where he like Frankenstein's like little guitars together to like, so all the grandkids have guitars, like, you know, little squires and stuff, but they're like souped up. So they're nicer than, you know, Every while. Like coming out of the box. Um, so I'll go to his place and he'll be like, try out these necks. There'll be like six different guitars. And, you know, like he wants, you know, to custom build me guitars that, that actually fit how I like to play, you know, cause yeah. the neck is, is crucial. <laughs> if it's too thick, I'm just going to be like, you know, not wanting to play it cause it's too hard, but yeah. Is this so a it's hobby fun to try it out. Is it a hobby of his now or? Yeah. 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 He's a, he's, you know, he's a sound guy and then, uh, He's a carpenter, so it just kind of goes hand in hand for him. He's a guitarist as well. So he's a builder. That's what it is. You build. He's right? a builder. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have you have vision and you build. Sarah, I threw out a couple of A's at you there. Eh? Like A, hey, Sarah, A, A, A. Now you go up to Canada. Are you used to that? Are you used to the A's coming your way? Or it doesn't even phase me anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Canada about I, usually about every six weeks for gigs, so um, I'm up there quite a bit. eh? <laughs> See? it is funny when i'm the one throwing out the a and nobody else is i'm like oh now you just sound like a poser <laughs> <laughs> no but you know what if it if it comes out naturally then then it just it's un it goes unnoticed right <laughs> <laughs> true what is funny is when people don't realize like canadians that don't realize they say a <laughs> yeah, it's not as I pronounced as they do in the movies right like it's normally just kind of like a hey, it's in passing <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you, buddy you keep saying a is there ever a b coming like it's always a where's, b? where's, b coming? where's your second point man yeah <laughs> yeah so listen when you go up to canada are you stopping in seattle like are you is there a stopover sometimes or sometimes yeah, yeah sometimes but generally i'm just up to surrey and then we go all over the place but we're either on the island or somewhere kind of it's all mainly bc right on but I think maybe we can at the end of, end of the year. I think at the end of the year we're playing. I want to say somewhere in Saskatchewan. I don't know. I'm not totally sure if that gig got solidified or not. So we'll be we'll be traveling out of our uh, western half at some we point. Gotta, we got to pull you to the east side of of Canada and and come do some stuff down here in southern Ontario or whatever. Uh, yeah, right. We'll that. we'll get the Sarah Moon band up there. That'll be great. Well, are you going to be with the album? Are you going to be like specifically touring that album or, or doing some yeah, shows? Yeah. So we've been doing yeah. some shows around the Pacific Northwest. We had an awesome album release show and uh, we're getting ready to do a pretty fun one. Um, there's a little town called Independence, Oregon, and we're playing okay. there on the 3rd of July for the Independence Day Festival. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. And it's like this really neat, you know, they have this big park in the middle of this really quaint downtown and, all you know people from all over will be there so that'll be super fun that sounds americana like it sounds mm -hmm. like gra grassroots and and fun and I yeah know, i kind of like that stuff so festivals like that can be really yeah. fun yeah you meet a so lot of really great people we're spinning the music you're gonna tour the album how about yeah. connecting people social media like do you have um specific links you prefer to connect with people on or or fans yeah so or? if if people want to hear my music, they can go to any any streaming platform, firstly. Um, you know, just it's under Sarah Moon Cut and Run. Otherwise, Sarah Moon Music is my website, sarahmoonmusic.com. 
for my Instagram handle and as well as my Facebook. It's all Sarah Moon Music. So I like to keep it concise. Everybody can find me under Sarah Moon Music. And great, beautiful website, by the way. You've got some great Thank pictures, you. access to your music. Like you've got some preview clips in there. It's nice and clean. And it's a fast, uh, fast website that loads. And you get oh, good. Of the band behind you there and, and beside you and doing a whole bit. You, there's a lot of folks that you list in the band, uh, Sarah. Um, yeah. Are they always, are you always playing with that group? Uh, on on every song uh, on tour or or on the album or is there variations of it um so everybody listed there would have been the studio band and then the majority of them do play live with me so okay um for the album release i think we had i did borrow a different horn section and different backup singers just because my my um the ladies that i hired to do the harmonies are based in a different state so i have um, local people helping with that but uh, I swapped out the drummer. Other than that, everybody was the same. And I also added another guitarist. So we went a little crazy tracking the guitars um, and needed to add a third guitarist for wow. some of the tracks. Um, and so we have this fantastic um, guitarist named Tim DeColetis that, that joined us. So in addition to that list, we have him and then uh, a different drummer, Ryan Moore. But Brandon Cook and I are, are the two that are, will pretty much always be be there i mean if i have to get a backup for him i, I will but you know you don't it's, want it's a pretty stable group otherwise but my my bassist tours with the eels so he's often in europe touring and so oh, i you know i have i have fill-in people which i'm you know very i feel very blessed and fortunate to be able to play with these fantastic musicians and that people are so excited about this music that they're they're you know it's been really easy to find a fill-in person should i need one and and it's a full band, like you know, when you look, yeah, obviously vocals, acoustic guitars, regular guitars, mandolins, mm -hmm. keys, percussions, bass, drums, organ keys, horns, like you're yeah. running the gamut on on yeah. like a full sound that that we're getting here too. So, uh, yeah. just to give folks an idea of of you know what what goes into this production, um, look, I've probably you're probably like, okay, is this guy gonna ever stop? I'm I'm asking you lots of questions and and what? No, it's fine. That's what we're okay. here for. <laughs> but um, before I did, you know, before I let you go, was there anything that you wanted to to add? I mean, it's been my absolute pleasure. And and if you haven't caught on, I'm a fan of your your songs and your sound and your style. Uh, I think it's inspiring. Um, uh, you know, and and inspiring because I, I i enjoy the music and 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 the songs as well but then also um you know having daughters uh inspiration for as a role model for mm -hmm. women and and you know showing what you can do and and what is possible and and how you go about and do that so uh, i really appreciate that that you're out there doing this and 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 being a role model in that in that capacity but is there anything that i i haven't asked you that maybe would make sense that you'd want to leave us with uh, sarah well, I, I want to thank you for um, bringing up, you know, daughters into this conversation, because as the album was coming to fruition, especially when you get to knocking me down, it's like, it's that female empowerment, you know, or, or male, anybody who's been kind of trampled on um, anthem. And so I, I just, you know, girls can rock too. <laughs> and it's, it's interesting how still even nowadays sometimes you face kind of this sexism in the in the music industry and um you know it, there's something out there for everyone and so it's just really um it's cool to hear that as a parent you're like yes this female forward kind of vibe is is really resonating with you um you know and if there's a way we can get the band up to your neck of the woods uh, we'd be happy to come up there and and rock out for sure We'd love to see it, Sarah. Thank you so much. That is rocker Sarah Moon coming to us from Portland, Oregon. And she has cut some new music. And it's something we want to run to as a straightforward rock is just over the moon. Never heard that cliche before. Chock full <laughs> of power vocals, melodies, hooks, and grabs. I will have all of Sarah's social media links in our show notes. Be sure to tune in to thepathradio.com to hear Sarah's song, Cut and Run. Thank you so much again, Sarah. I hope that you'll come back and best wishes to you and the band. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll come back anytime. It's lovely to, to chat with you.